Davis, Nicholas B. Church here, here with uh, Dylan Hunter. Hello, everybody. And um, today we're here to start a project, more or less. Um, I'm a big fan of The Walking Dead, and I love everything TV, movie, video game, everything like that. I love all that stuff, and uh, when I run across something that's really cool out of one of those that no one's tried making or uh, you can't find it for sale, I usually like accepting the challenge of trying to make it. Mm. And today we're starting what we've dubbed Project Dixon. and Because um, we're not clever. <laughs> and we're going to try to make that um, angel-winged vet, leather vest that Daryl Dixon wears during the uh, Walking Dead series. Um, I found from Jaffram, is the Amazon seller, uh, has a leather vest that I particularly liked for this, and uh, we'll show you why. It just came in today. There we go. It's not exactly like Daryl's, but there are some strong similarities, because then again, this is a replica, and it's not going to be movie quality or anything like that. Um, Daryl's isn't western cut, although this one is. Uh, it has you know some similar pockets like Daryl's. Uh, it is a genuine leather. Uh, it's got some inside pockets for functionality and stuff, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the more important things, as far as likeness to Daryl's vest, it does have the lace-up sides, as you can see. Um, on, you know, obviously on both sides. Um, on the back, another reason I selected this one, I really like this one. As you can see, there are hardly, there's not a middle seam, there's not two side seams, there's not a western cut seam, nothing like that. There's just these two, which means you got a lot of room to put those angel wings on when we get to that point without having to cross over a seam and uh, make it bulky or anything like that in a certain point. So, um, from here on, we'll walk through some steps uh, how we're going to proceed to make the Daryl Dixon vest. So here we are in the first official step of the Daryl Dixon project. Uh, the reason that you see some blue jeans in front of me is because uh, Daryl's wings on the back of his vest, they're actually bleached denim. That's why on screen sometimes in episodes they'll appear to have a yellow tint to them. Um, so I actually got these jeans. You don't need some really expensive ones. You go to your, like your local thrift store, DAV, something like that, and get some for like two dollars, three dollars. I actually found these ones in a dumpster <laughs> that no one was using. <laughs> so the Daryl Dixon vest is coming from humble beginnings. Um, well, the important thing to do is um, when you're buying them, and the most important thing to remember throughout this project is probably that anytime you're working with materials such as this or wood or, or anytime you're building a project. More is better. So once you you can't grow something back, but you can always take something away. So mm -hmm. when you go to pick out your jeans, uh, get ones with a bigger waist size or something like that, and make, make sure you cut out the biggest area that you can, and then just work from there because you never know what's going to happen. Um, so these ones were already kind of cut up. I'm assuming that's why they were in the dumpster. Um, so I, here's a good here's a good area right here. I'd probably cut all the way down through here and all the way back up. Like I said, more is better, and I would cut from seam here to seam here. Um, and I've already done that on one of the legs. Woo! Here you go. Probably a lot bigger space than I'm actually going to need for my back, but like I said, you want to make sure that you have more than you need, um, you know, just for the simple fact that it's not like I can grow a pair of jeans back or something if I cut off more than I desire to. Um, next step, we're going to move out and we will show you um, that we'll, how we're going to bleach them. Alright, here's one of the jean pieces that we cut out. Um, as you can see, it takes up primarily the whole back. Um, and then here's the other one, which is actually was a larger piece that I was able to cut out uh, since the jeans had some uh, razor blade cuts on them or yeah. whatever. But uh, anyway, so as you can see, it, I mean, they take up primarily the whole back. One thing you remember, um, we're going to uplink some pictures too, but um, Daryl's wings they start about right up here and they run really close to the sides and there's like this much space between them and then they're about two to three inches from the bottom of the vest so you're gonna need some pretty big wings um, I mean his take up primarily all the back of the vest so keep that in mind as you're cutting your denim because that's really important um, you know or you I mean you may end up spending a lot of money uh, where you didn't really need to mm -hmm.
Okay, here we are ready to uh, start bleaching the uh, the denim squares that we cut out, or the denim shapes we cut out. I guess they're not squares. Um, I did read an article on the internet that said for every bit of bleach that you put in, put in an equal or a little bit more amount of water because you don't want your bleach to eat up your denim. So uh, we're just going to start by, we'll just go ahead and put the denim in. Unscientifically, just throw <laughs> some in there. Yep, we don't measure things on the game yet. I guess not. We're not a cooking channel. All right, here we go. And we'll throw in some water because we don't want it all get eaten up. There we are. That seems about right. Yep. Yeah. And um, we'll probably fill it a little bit more, but just keep that in mind as you, you go through this to have what you have of bleach have about 50 50 at least. All right, and here we are about four hours later after having the uh, denim pieces in the bleach. And as you can see, they're primarily all white now. Uh, we have a few blue spots showing through. Um, but if we need to, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it and uh, bleach them out. And next step, we'll be applying the pattern for the wings and uh, getting that embroidered on there. All right, so that went to... Uh... Pretty well, I feel. I feel like it's going pretty well. Oh. Hey. <sighs> oh yeah, that's better. Yep. The wild oh. cherry Pepsi. Dude, there's always room for wild cherry Pepsi when building the Daryl Dixon jacket. Always. Alright, and so um, after you have the bleached denim, uh, it's time to do the wings. I've already, uh, I've already had the wings made, and um, as you can see, I don't know if you can tell right now on camera, but they are embroidered, uh, and you don't have to have them embroidered. And the only reason I had to take it to somebody is because here at the Game Yanks, we don't have the, um, we don't have the hundreds of dollars worth of machinery to be able to do a design like this. Um, but, I mean, in my local town, we have a place where we can do that. Um, in your city or your town, if you don't, uh, screen printing is also another good option. Uh, it's also probably a cheaper option. The embroidery is going to cost you for uh, the wings together. It's probably going to end up costing around, I would guess, $35. Um, screen printing, it will end up being cheaper. So if you have a t-shirt printing place in your, uh, in your city or in your town, that's a good option. If you have neither, um, I'm sure. If you, I'm sure. Hopefully, you have a Hobby Lobby or Joann's, Walmart, something where you can go get a fabric pin, uh, where you can draw them on there. Um, you know, that is definitely that's an option. Uh, I did have them leave around the uh, the denim, as you can see around it. It's not on the vest yet, and there is a reason for that. And we'll get into that here right now. Here's the other wing. Um, as you can see, I've already went and I've cut around. Uh, I've I've left probably about an inch at, in, in most areas because what I'm going to have them do now is I'll have to take it back to that same place because again we do not have the sewing uh, capabilities to be able to sew a patch on a leather vest because essentially that's what this is now. So I'll take it back and I'll have them sew it on the vest and um, I'll still have this on there and then when we bring it back then I'll cut around it with scissors and get it close and it'll end up uh, leaving that frayed, uh, tattered look along the edges that, that we want. That'll make it look like uh, Daryl's vest from the show. It'll add that kind of aged, worn look to it. Uh, and up here at the top, I have, you can probably see the pin, I have pinned it to the vest. Definitely do this before you take it to have it sewn back on. At least one of the wings. I, I, you know I only did one of them. I didn't do the other one. Um, that way you can put it on and see it, when you wear it if that's where the wings need to be in comparison to uh, pictures of maybe like what Daryl's looks like on the show or, uh, or what ours looks like that we're making here. That way you can see how high that they need to go or how low that they need to go. Um, the wings that I have here, I had about 12 inches between the shoulders. Actually I think it was 13. So the total design of the wings I told them to make it 12. Um, from one end of the wing to the other, and the each wing is about is about fourteen and a half inches long, um, and that as you can see that that left up that took up a pretty good spot in the back. And um, the next step, we will uh, I'll finish cutting around this one, and then we will take it and have it sewn on, and uh, we will come back and trim up the edges and show you how to do that. 
Okay, now you can see we got the wings sewn on the vest. Um, I had them leave this extra material, which if any of you at home are deciding to do this project, I would advise that you do it as well. Um, because now what I'm going to do is uh, I'll go through and, and just kind of pull it. Uh, pull some of these loose ends like this. And that's going to end up getting you uh, a frayed edge to have that worn out look like Daryl's wings. Yep, an hour later.